We have experts from around the world that will discuss the latest concepts and technology for assessing ectasia risk, which is definitely beyond keratoconus detection. And the question we have for a candidate that has the interest for undergoing such procedures is if the cornea can be safely weakened. The new version of the TBI was able to remove all doubts that this was a risky case. The TBI version 2 was effective in showing high risk of ectasia in both eyes. It's very interesting that with only tomography, most of these patients would have been considered completely normal. So, in conclusion, ectasia can happen even with slightly abnormal topography, and the CBI and the TBI version 2 revealed very high risk of ectasia preoperatively. When we go to the integration of biomechanics, we definitely improve. And here we improve from 90% to 98.4%. And this is statistically significant on the area under the ROC curve. So we can truly say that this is truly an advance based on high, higher accuracy based on AI. I've been using the biomechanics, the Pentacam for the last close to uh, two decades now. See, when we started uh, looking at uh, looking at biomechanics, uh, it looked like a great thought uh, in theory, but very little application in practical. When it started becoming mature, we started understanding where we had lacunae in our connect between topography, biomechanics, and to the patient. And at this point of time, it forms a very integral part of my planning of refractive surgery. The biomechanics has three important foundations in my clinical practice. One, to choose yes or no. Should I do a surgery or should I avoid completely? The point two, which is the second foundation, if I choose to go yes, what type of technology I use. The third foundation is when you're looking at a case where you are, where you have said no to a particular procedure, maybe three years back or maybe long in the past. And these patients come to you and ask, oh, can you do something about it? Now, based on topography, you're still not sure, but the biomechanics will try to tell you, oh, you may not be suitable for LASIK five or seven years back, but now you may be suitable for uh, PRK or uh, extra procedures with uh, lenticule-based uh, surgeries. And these three foundations are happening at a very regular time, all time in our practice. So I would say that, um, you know, there are, there are cases that we come across where we're all ready to go. And we've decided that the epithelial map, the tomography, the topography is normal, and there's enough cornea to take out that amount of tissue. And then we see a very high corneal biomechanical index, you know, very, very basically, you know, a softer cornea. And then we see that the TBI is actually quite high. So I, I think that, you know, there are cases where where the, the biomechanical measurement puts a puts a little stopper on things where we would have gone ahead. And that's different from before because we didn't have the measurement before. Likewise, there are cases the other way around where we're a little bit concerned about the morphology of the cornea, but then we look at the biomechanical indexes and we're like, well, actually, this is a very stiff cornea and the TBI is like nothing. So that actually factors into our uh, uh, confidence. I mean, keratoconus. And so, you know, this multimodal approach of multiple devices, including history and ethnicity and all that, that gives us a better opportunity of getting it right. TBI is an example of how, you know, the overall specificity and sensitivity of your impression can be improved you know, by comparing the information from your shape devices, your anterior surface, your posterior surface, 
with an actual measured mechanical strength uh, or mechanical behavior of a cornea. And that's so that we've opened another axis um, using the, the, the CBI and the TBI. Doing the surgery is a binary decision. You either do it or you don't. So you need to have a, a certain amount of confidence to offer surgery to a patient. Um, and it has to be done, I think, with all of these parameters together. The mechanical component is, you know, a shining star in our multimodal approach. You know, the TBI is very accurate. That doesn't mean that we were going to uh, treat less patients. So using the TBI and the CBI is preventing to treat the wrong patient. The biggest worry is that when you integrate biomechanics, your practice will reduce because you're looking at, you are not rejecting anybody. You're just triaging them. But if you use it for all the three foundation I said, then you will increase by close to 28 to 30 percent. There is no way you will reduce your practice. If I have a doubt in a topography, I would spend a lot of time thinking, debating. But the question is, what really guides you? Nothing. So if I have this parameter in my uh, file with the patient, then I exactly know that I have already decided based on it before the patient comes in because my triaging is done. So in fact, I spend less time. Actually, the, the workflow is much faster and I, I would request them to integrate it as fast as possible. If you have an example of a, an eye where the clinician is unsure about the presence of keratoconus pre-op in a pre-op exam, if you have mechanical information of the cornea, which we're obviously getting from the corvus, then that measurement does give you an added comfort or not that this cornea is adequate for refractive surgery and ectasia is rare it's not common it's you know one in a thousand to one in ten thousand depending on who you look look at and what and how much how much multimodality is being used those using more multimodality have less ectasia that that's for sure um, but i think that adding mechanics to your approach in evaluating refractive surgeons, uh, refractive surgery patients is, I, I would say, has to be a gold standard now. It's not, it's not a research tool. It's something that everybody doing refractive surgery should also have that measurement incorporated into their decision tree as to whether they can operate on a cornea or not. Through uh... IRB uh, approved studies and had um, access to some of the first in-office devices um, to be able to evaluate our own patients um, for many, many years. Um, this has given us a unique glimpse into what is not commercially available because it is not FDA approved in the United States. And that's a real shame because in our practice, we can't live without it. And we're thankful to have that access because this gives us a unique aspect into uh, strength and uh, and whole whole eye, uh, the importance of whole eye biomechanics. So, um, with that said, we have high hopes to be able to have access to FDA approval to devices such as the Corvus so that we can all benefit from the uh, years of uh, collaboration and hard work from Dr. Ambrosio and Dr. Roberts, Dr. Vinciguerra and others um, so that we can make better decisions. And I, the, the TBI uh, two is just a great example of that and what the future holds with artificial intelligence as well. And um, because it's gonna help us take better care of our patients as we can see. So we have scanned every patient that has come through our clinic for uh, um, years and years and years with the, the different versions of the Corvus. Uh, I'm so convinced that the combination of uh, Corvus and Pentacam is so uh, valuable and so efficient in detecting keratoconus susceptibility that I have not treated a single patient 
without using both machines in the past five years. That's an absolute must for me. The, co the Corvus is a totally different ball game um, it, it, because it, it's actually a multifactorial measure of mechanics. It's looking at the shape change over time with force applied and, and it's, it's a far more sophisticated way of, of um, getting an impression of corneal mechanics. The reason why it's critical to use a multimodal approach is because ectasia is actually a very difficult thing to detect pre-op. We have four devices in our clinic because we do testing on everyone before and after surgery. Our colleagues were telling us that they thought there was a difference in the CBI, how it was working in Chinese patients. So what we have seen were two main things. The first one is that the thickness profile, that it's different, East Asian in general, are um, slightly thinner. And also the cornea is behaving uh, a bit softer. We optimized the coefficients to make the CBI in Chinese people as sensitive and specific as we are used to for Caucasian ethnicity. So this is uh, named similar because it's named CCBI, but it's a different index. So it's optimized for Chinese population. So this is, I think this is a, a very important step forward, particularly because we know that the Chinese population is the biggest population in the world and they are spread out all over the, the world. I think it's a very, very, very good uh, source of air because there are so many uh, Chinese doctors to hope the new uh, source of air to improve the, the uh, work uh, because uh, you know the Chinese that every day is uh, so many myopia surgery and before the reflex surgery we must to use the uh, CP, you, you, you know, uh, Pentecom and the COVID to diagnose uh, to uh, select the cat corners. That's a very important work. Mm -hmm.